Good morning, my name's Dan. I thought I would take a minute this morning to talk about bending brakes. There's been quite a bit of discussion, always is, on scratch-built aircraft about what you actually need for a bending brake, if you need a bending brake, what you need to do with it. Um, you've got several options, some of them are better than others, but I think in the end you definitely do need a bending brake of your own, whether it's a purchase brake, one you've home-built, that type of thing. Um, some guys are finding their local heating and air conditioning outfits to bend their material for them. Problems with that are usually their machines are not set up for the bend radius you want because you have to have a bend radius on all your aluminum and usually they're too tight on, on the uh, heating and air conditioning brakes the way they're set up. You can work around the bend radius a little bit by bending a piece of aluminum over the leaf of their brake and that and leave that on while the rest of your material is bent. That will give you a little more radius and you can calculate that. The problem is that the leaf has to be reset or should be reset on most machines to offset for that extra thickness that you've added for that radius on the nose of the bending leaf. So to me that's not really a good option. The brake that I use right now is a Max Machine brake that he designed the plans for. He was an engineer and I believe he built a 601 HD at one point in time and he sold the plans for an 8 foot metal brake uh, for up to 032 material. The brake works extremely well. I spent a few hundred dollars building it and it's not a real easy project. You're going to spend some time building it and it takes a fair amount of material, a fair amount of welding. It makes a really nice brake when you're done but you've got a lot invested in that machine to have a, to have a brake. If I was going to do it now, I don't know that I would build that brake. Um, now that I've got it, I really enjoy it. I use it a lot for building. I'll use it for my next projects down the road. If I was going to build a brake right now, the options are Max Machine and Design Brake, who sells the plans for his 8 foot 032 brake. It's a great brake. There's a brake put out, uh, Mark Townsend's, the, the name on the plans. Um, those plans are still available for, for free actually on the Home Built Help website. Uh, they've got the, the Home Built Help videos out there. And uh, I really recommend their Scratch Building Basics video, which is a two DVD set. I think it's a it's a really good design, and it gives you the link on that site to get their plans. Um, that's a really nice brake. I think it's a I think I believe it's 52 inch um, capacity. I'm actually going to build one of those brakes. I think both so I can find out how well it works, how expensive it is, and um, just see how well it works. I think a lot of times I would like to have a smaller brake. And a 52-inch brake will do the majority of what you're going to bend for your airplane. Um, so I think that may be a really good option. Like I say, I'm going to do a series on building one of those. That will be coming out real soon here when we get started on that. And the other option is Dave Clay's brake, who Dave Clay started out building a Xena 601, um, since sold or abandoned that project, and has built a Sonax, built and flown a Sonax. And now I think he's back working on a 701. I think I saw him on the Zenith Builders Group. Um, a fairly simple design, relatively inexpensive, um, done out of stock materials. I think that's a good option. Some guys have had problems making that brake work, and I can see some limitations to that brake. I'm not sure what kind of a bend radius you actually get with that by the time you factor in the, the hinge that's being used on that and the way it's set up. But a lot of people are using it. I know he's built at least one airplane using that brake, so obviously it works. So that's probably going to be the best low-cost option. It's going to cost you the least and, and have a functional brake. I don't know that it's the most convenient to use. Uh, I can see it being a little more finicky to set up for each of your bends, where one of the other two brakes, either the Max brake or the uh, or Mark's brake from Home Built Help, both of those are pretty much you walk up, put your material in, uh, you know, close the leaf on it with, with levers, and make your bend. So I kind of, I think I favor either of those two, two brakes. You know, you can go to a Harbor Freight and get one of their brakes. I don't really care for what they've got. I think there's other options that are better suited. This is a, you know, three, four, five, six year long project, and you have to enjoy doing it. You know, if you lose interest, if something's got to be too much of a pain in the butt to do, you're not going to work on it. So it's going to stall out the project. So it's well worth money spent to, to have a functional brake in your, in your shop to do what you want to do. And I think it'll help keep your project going. So my thoughts, you know, uh, you can take them for what it's worth. Uh, free advice is just that. It's free advice.